The title of my keynote is The Difference Between Ordinary and Extraordinary. And in that keynote, I share stories of three remarkable Toastmasters that I've encountered in my 16 years as a member who have made such an impression on me for different reasons. And I look at what makes them extraordinary, what makes their clubs extraordinary, because I don't know about you, but I would rather be extraordinary than ordinary, if at all possible. And I know what it feels like to get extraordinary service. Welcome to another episode of B50 After Dark. I'm your host, Mickey Bennett. And today we will again be interviewing the first vice president of Toastmasters International, Aleta Rasha. First, a word from our sponsors. We have two amazing sponsors for today's episode. The first is Habitat Commons. Habitat Commons is a beautiful co-working space providing an invigorating work environment for creative and other professionals. It's conveniently located near Highway 75 in the President George Bush Tollway in Plano, Texas. To learn more, visit HabitatCommons.com. We are also brought to you by Moon Vision Productions. Moon Vision Productions is a full service photography and video production company that services small businesses and individuals, taking your content to the next level. Follow them on Instagram at moonvision underscore productions. Well, Aleta Rasha, welcome back to D50 After Dark. I really enjoyed our previous conversation, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about an opportunity our listeners if they are in the dallas fort worth metroplex their opportunity to meet you in person you are coming to dallas i am i consider myself very lucky to be coming to the district 50 conference and i look forward to meeting so many of your members there yeah and for those of you who don't know who aletta is Listen to our previous episode. She's the first vice president of Toastmasters International. We explained what that means and, and a little bit about her background in that episode. Today, we're going to talk about your trip to Dallas. But first, I wanted to just touch on the fact that this year marks the 100-year anniversary of Toastmasters International. What an exciting time to be a Toastmaster. It really is. It's a cause for celebration and it's a cause or an opportunity for us to reflect. There are not many organizations in this world that reach that milestone. It's, it's, I think it's absolutely amazing. And the fact that we're still going strong makes it even more exciting. Yeah, at some point, an organization gets so big and lasts so long through generations, it becomes an institution. And that's how I see Toastmasters. It's it's an institution. It's in most countries around the world. It's it, you have people who their parents and grandparents were Toastmasters, and so it's become multi generational. So it really is a a part of our international culture. So a hundred years. Um, we are celebrating a hundred years of Toastmasters in a lot of ways. Here in District 50, we're really focusing on having the best district conference ever. And we're really excited that you're going to be visiting Dallas uh, and you're going to be giving a keynote speech. You're going to be giving an educational session and you're going to be doing a networking mix and mingle session. So, That's right. So if you want to meet Aletta, come to the district conference, register right away, and, and you'll be able to meet her in person and ask her all your questions about the future of Toastmasters. Aletta will most likely be our international president in the future. So you're giving a keynote speech. Tell us, what's, what's the title of your speech? The title of my keynote is The Difference Between Ordinary and Extraordinary. And in that keynote, I share stories of three remarkable Toastmasters that I've encountered in my 16 years as a member who have made such an impression on me for different reasons. And 
I look at what makes them extraordinary, what makes their clubs extraordinary, because I don't know about you, but I would rather be extraordinary than ordinary, if at all possible. And I know what it feels like to get extraordinary service, you know, outside of Toastmasters and inside of Toastmasters. And these three individuals, their stories have left an indelible footprint on my heart. And I want to share this because I think we can learn from them. Very cool. So you, in your keynote speech, you're, you're going to share with us three stories. So I don't, want, I don't want to spoil the stories of those three speeches, but it's safe to say that in your 16 years with Toastmasters, you've experienced extraordinary things yourself. What, what about your Toastmasters journey would you describe as not being ordinary, but being extraordinary? I think what I learned very on early on, Mickey, and it's something that I, I knew before Toastmasters, but Toastmasters really brought it to life, is that I remember the day my club president came, addressed our club and said, you know, when you join, you're joining to feed whatever you need to, you know, get the evaluations, to get more confident in public speaking. But she said to us, there's a moment you have to learn to give. And you give by taking on meeting roles, you give by taking on club officer roles. And I've never forgotten that. And in my life, I've learned that when you raise your hand to say, yes, I will, even if you don't quite know what you're going to, you're letting yourself in for, you haven't got 100% of the skills. Well, after you raise your hand and you become coachable and teachable and give to your club or whatever it is you're um, stepping up for, then opportunity comes your way. And I've had so many instances where I've raised my hand and just taken a leap of faith into the next level of leadership. But the advantages, the opportunities, the payback has been so immense, much more than I ever could have imagined. And that is extraordinary. The fact that I'm talking to you today as the first vice president, I didn't even know that was a possibility when I first joined Toastmasters. But every step of the way I've raised my hand given my best, and so much has come back to me as a result. And I want other people to understand that. We're all busy. There's nobody that is lying around saying, I have you know, plenty of time, let me take on a leadership role. Most of us have to make space for that in our lives. But when we do, we get the opportunity to pay it forward, to positively impact other people, and many, many opportunities come back. When when I hear you, you talk about the extraordinary possibilities of Toastmasters, it makes me, it always reminds me that we're not just doing this to be able to give a great speech at our at our company or at our church or wherever it is. Many of us join looking for that. You know, we have a presentation at work and we want to learn how to you know, not make a fool of ourselves, right? But at some point you realize that it impacts so many other areas of your life. Has Toastmasters interacted your life outside of Toastmasters with your family or your other communities? Absolutely. I, I firmly believe I'm a better wife and a mother as a result of, you know, being learning to listen, learning, learning to analyze what I'm hearing, learning to communicate what I need to communicate and how I feel. In my private capacity, it has completely overhauled my what I do professionally. And before I joined, you know, I'd been a stay-at-home mom for 11 years and I'd left a marketing career, you know, before that. And taking up roles in Toastmasters put me back in touch with that business person I'd been prior to starting a family. And it's led to extraordinary opportunities. I've published two books. I now do coaching on um, executive presence. I've got clients from all over the world. None of that would have happened without Toastmasters. So I'm internally grateful for everything that came my way as a result of not only becoming a Toastmaster and being active, but stepping into leadership and always being ready to raise my hand for the next level of leadership or the next opportunity. You've published two books. What are the titles of your books? The first one was called The Wedding Speaker's Guide because I'd gone to one too many weddings where the speeches were atrocious <laughs> and where people had the opportunity to really give a gift that only they could give. And 
you know, I'd, I'd just seen that one too many times. So I published a book in 2017 called The Wedding Speaker's Guide. And the other book I published was called Speak, Connect, Succeed. And it's about building your reputation as you speak. Because we all speak every single day. But if we take advantage of those opportunities to communicate well, we can enhance our reputation on a daily basis. And all of the, the learning that I share in these books has come to me directly or indirectly through Toastmasters. Wow. Well, I think you definitely know something about extraordinary. You've, you've accomplished extraordinary things in, in your lifetime, not the least of which is being a mother of three. So, that, so I, I'm eager to hear your keynote speech about ordinary and extraordinary. Do you, do you do a lot of keynote speeches in, in your role as first vice president? I do. Part of our role when we're on the board as international director or, or as a member of the executive committee is to be a brand ambassador. And part of that is expressed when we do district visits. And as international director or member of the executive committee, we do keynotes, we deliver workshops. And the point of those is to help others uh, by you know through what we express in those keynotes or workshops but my style of workshops has always been exceptionally pragmatic you know it's I put the work into workshop it's not going to be you sitting back and listening to me speak for however long I'm allocated it's going to be me sharing practical ideas and you putting them to action straight away and that's how I believe we really get value from workshop workshops yeah and you, your keynote speech, most Toastmasters projects, our speeches are five to seven minutes, but a keynote speech will usually be 30, 45, or even longer in duration. And that may intimidate a lot of people. Do you, do you have any advice for Toastmasters who are looking to make that transition from your standard five to seven minute speech to doing these longer form speeches like a keynote? I think you have to plan just like you do for a five to seven minute speech. There has to be a structure involved. Storytelling is a wonderful way to add detail and substance to your keynote and to take up more time. My personal preference is to speak at most for about 30 minutes and then I like to open it up for Q&A because I believe there's a lot of value in people being able to ask questions on what you've spoken about as well. And and a keynote, I don't want to talk at people for a long time. I want to engage with them. And having a QA and a allows me to get more up close and personal to the audience members. So that's my personal preference. That's, that's a great tip and kind of reemphasizes, as we all know, if you're going to do Q&A, get that practice in doing table topics. <laughs> And also, you know, no one will, will um, hold it against you if you speak to less than the time you allocated, but don't speak more than the time you allocated. Um, people will remember that for the wrong reasons. Yeah, that's a good point. Make sure you finish on time. So important. Well, you're doing an educational session, and you mentioned how you like your workshops to be really hands-on and very pragmatic. So I'm looking forward to seeing what topic you pick for your educational session. And then finally, you'll be doing a networking mix and mingle. So what, what exactly is that? That's an opportunity for me to meet as many of the District 50 members as possible and for them to interact with me. I think it's very important as an organization that our leaders are not sitting in some ivory tower out of touch with the general membership. It's so important for us as leaders to listen to the members, to hear directly from them about what's going well and what needs to be improved. And for us also to have an opportunity to express our thanks and support to our leaders and our members. So it's a very, it's a core part of who we are. It's we're a very accessible organization. The leaders are members first and interacting with our leaders helps us express that in a unique way. And in, in your role as first vice president and previously as second vice president, you've, you've already done a lot of these mix and mingles at various Toastmasters mm -hmm. events. What are the kind of things people talk to you about and ask you about when they meet you at these mix and mingles? 
often they want to know a bit more about me and they want to kind of get a sense of who I am. It's one thing to see my photograph on the website. It's another thing to interact with me as a person. And the same is true in reverse. You know, I love meeting district leaders. I love meeting members because they've each got a story that is different to mine. And inevitably, every time I go to one of these events, I learn something new. I'm able to share an idea or take an idea that someone has shared with me and take that back with me and use that to improve what we do. So it's just, you know, Toastmasters love Toastmasters. So this is a wonderful time to get together and just get to know more people. I often try and describe it to my husband who happens not to be a Toastmaster. And I say it in this way, that every time I go to one of these events, it's like my Toastmasters family gets a little bit bigger. And hopefully if I see many of these members at convention, I can reconnect. So over time, my Toastmasters family grows bigger and bigger. And I certainly hope that growth will never stop. Yeah, very cool. Well, we're about at the end of this episode, Aletta, and I just want to encourage all of our listeners to register for the District 50 conference. It, you can find out everything you need to know and register by going D, to d50tm.org. Register for the conference. Come and see Aletta's keynote speech or educational session mix and mingle meet her shake her hand at the at the mix and mingle and and i will see all of you there and we are going to have one more episode with aletta in our next episode we are going to talk about club growth and building membership with aletta i'm looking forward to having our next conversation aletta well, that's it for today's episode Tune in next time for another episode of D50 After Dark.